what is primary secondary, what is the theory, how does it work, and how can we take it and build up on this to get to the point that we're looking at large systems, place to start. I kind of like calling this the good Lord's T law. What goes in a T has to come out. And when I put two T's together, I have the common pipe and a primary secondary setup. So let's just go down to the individual T. Let's keep this real simple. This is not a complex theory. If you just go down and look at the T law and work your way through it, it becomes pretty simple. So the T law says very simple. If I put 150 GPM into that T, to the right hand side, I take out 100 GPM, there can only be 50 GPM left going up, going north. That's the only thing it could be. And so the T law says what goes in the T has to come out. So kind of keep that theory in mind, and as you approach each T in the primary secondary piping, it becomes pretty simple. So let's just take that a little bit further so you kind of understand. What I've done now is put two T's together. I've added a pump and I've added a cooling core. Could be a heating core, doesn't matter. But flow-wise, I want you to understand what's happening around that common pipe and that T. And we've got to start with a setup like this that makes sense. So first of all, I've got 100 GPM going to the first T. I have a balancing valve or circuit setter in that common pipe closed, totally closed. And if it's totally closed, obviously the flow rate through the common pipe has to be zero. Okay, now you go to the secondary pipe, which we haven't quite defined yet, but we're defining it as we go, the secondary loop through the cooling coil, that flow rate has to be 100 GPM. So the primary flow rate is 100 because the bypass, the common pipe, has a closed balancing valve in it, and we've got 100 GPM now going through the cooling coil. I think that makes pretty good sense and uh, should, should be pretty simple. Now, what happens as we open up that balancing valve? What happens in that little piece of common pipe as we start opening the valve up? So let's take a look. If I open it up a little bit and I allow 35 GPM to go through the circuit setter in that common pipe between the two T's. Remember the good Lord's T loss. I got two T's there. What goes in that first T has to come out. What goes in the second T has to come out. So to keep that in mind, it's pretty simple. I now have a partially open bypass. I only have a pump in my primary. There is no pump in the secondary, but I've got pressure drop between the two T's but I'm allowing 35 GPM to go through from T1 to T2 through the balancing valve. So if you look at the first T, I've got 100 GPM. I've got 35 GPM going through the T. That leaves 65 GPM going through the cooling core. So when you put those numbers up there, it's pretty simple to see what happens. Now, as I continue to open the balancing valve, as I continue to decrease the pressure drop, between the two T's. That's all I'm doing. I'm decreasing the pressure drop as I open the balancing valve. Now I've jumped up from 35 to 70 GPM going through that T. Remember, there is no secondary pump at this stage, just point in time. The pressure drop through the T is controlling the flow rate through the cooling core. The pressure drop between the two T's in that common pipe is controlling the flow in the secondary loop. So let's, in this case, we've got, we allow 70 GPM to flow from the first T to the second T. I've got 100 going in. That leaves 30 GPM going through my cooling coil. Coming out of the cooling coil, I've got 30 GPM going back in with the 70 GPM, giving me 100 GPM leaving. Now, what would happen if I took that balancing valve or that uh, circuit setter totally out of that piece of common pipe? And now I have removed it. I've taken it totally out. Now, here's all the theory there is to primary or secondary. If there's no pressure drop in that piece of common pipe between those two T's, there'll be no flow in the secondary circuit. Ah, oh, hang on a second. Let me repeat that. So now I've removed all pressure drop. I do not have a pump in the secondary circuit yet. I'm going to put one in a few minutes, but I do not have a pump on the secondary circuit. And between the two T's, there's no pressure drop. 100 GPM goes to the first T travel straight through that common pipe to the second T, it's 100 GPM, leaving zero flow to the cooling coil, zero flow to the secondary circuit. I have decoupled the primary loop from the secondary loop because there's no pressure drop between the T's. That's all the theory there is. The pressure drop between the T's 
determines the flow through the cooling core in the secondary circuit. If there is no pressure drop in the common pipe, there will be no flow in that secondary pipe unless I add a pump. That's what primary secondary is all about. Just that simple. Now we're going to take that a little bit further to make sure you fully get the idea. And I guess reverse of that would be, this is the same slide, I'm just going to make the same statement a little bit different. When the two piping circuits interconnected, flow in one will not cause flow in the other. When the two circuits are shown here and there's no pressure drop between the two T's, flow rate in the secondary circuit or flow rate in the primary circuit will not cause any flow in the other one. That's the same thing said a little bit different, but it's important you grasp this is a theory. That's all there is. And the key is understanding the pressure drop between the two T's in the common pipe controls the flow in each. And if there's no pressure drop in the common pipe, then flow in one circuit will not impact flow in the other circuit. And that's the key fundamental building block we need to get hold of. So as we're working our way through this, we're going to repeat that a little bit to make sure you understand, and we're going to go ahead and give you some definitions. Now, first of all, I'm showing a primary secondary connection with no pumps. I got primary piping. ASHRAE refers to that as production piping. Then I got the common pipe. The common pipe is between those two T's, two good little T laws we talked about. Some people call that a decoupler. Some people call that a neutral bridge. Uh, Bell and Gossett, who came up with primary secondary, got named Gil Carson, defined that as the common pipe. Now, what we're trying to do in true primary secondary design is keep that pressure drop as close to zero as you can get. It could be 18 inches or some small amount of numbers, but we want it to be a as minimum or as close as zero pressure drop between the two T's as we can get there. Then you see the secondary loop, the distribution pipe in the secondary loop, the secondary load side. It's your water hot water, doesn't matter. Those are the definitions of what you need to be looking at at primary or secondary. And we're going to add some pumps to this and go through what we just taught you because this is all the theory you need to understand, but we're going to make sure we keep it simple and you got it in mind. So here we go. I've got primary or secondary set up now and I have a primary pump and it's a 100 GPM pump. I've got my little green common pipe there with no pressure draw, no circuit setter, no pressure draw. I've got a secondary loop with a cooling coil, no pump. So if I flow 100 GPM through that primary loop, the first T gets 100 GPM, and there's no pressure draw in the common pipe. So 100 GPM flows through the common pipe to the second T, and the 100 GPM goes on out. So there's no flow in that secondary circuit. The only way to get flow in that secondary circuit, add a pump. So, secondary pump, the secondary pump establishes the secondary flow rate. So here we go. We add the pump, the pump we talked about. And now we have uh, probably the first time you've actually seen the total simple little circuit of primary secondary, primary pump, 100 GPM. Secondary circuit in this case is 150 GPM. But now we have a primary secondary setup and you've got the definitions involved. So let's have a little fun here. If I've got 100 GPM in the primary loop, I'm showing a pump in the secondary loop taking out 150 GPM. Is that possible? Absolutely. There's no reason it couldn't be. So I've got 150 GPM in the cooling coil circuit on the secondary circuit and 100 GPM in the primary circuit. How is that possible? Ask yourself the good little steel. What will be the flow in the common pipe and in what direction? And I hope you came up with a very simple answer, 50 GPM reverse flow. Maybe I should make sure you hear that one again. 50 GPM in reverse flow. You may not want this, but this is what's going to happen because there's no pressure drop in the common pipe. So now you see how to get a little T balls working for you. That first T, you've got 100 GPM in it from the primary, 50 GPM from the common, 150 GPM going to the secondary circuit of the cooling core. Coming out of the cooling core, you got 150 GPM. You've got 100 GPM going back to the system and 50 GPM reverse flow going back to the loop. Now what happens if the circular pump is sized based on secondary pressure drop only? In other words, the secondary pump head loss is secondary loop pressure drop only. Make sure you don't lose that. The head loss in that 150 GPM pump is only the pressure drop in a cooling core circuit and the piping to the common piping back. You don't put any of the pressure drop in the primary loop pump. You only put in the secondary pump, the 150 GPM pump, you only put the pressure drop associated in that one loop. 
Now, if you start playing around a little bit with the flow rates, you should be get comfortable with what's going to happen here. The secondary flow rate is independent of the primary flow rate. Now, we, in the previous slide, had 100 GPM in the primary loop. We had 150 GPM in the secondary loop. Now we've increased the primary pump flow rate to 200 GPM. But look what happened to the secondary flow rate. Nothing. It stays 150. Nothing's happened. It's still the same flow rate. But what happened in the common? Look at the common pipe. What happened there? Well, let's see. We put 200 GPM to the first T and take 150 out. That means we've got to have 50 GPM flowing to the right now. So we've got 50 going in to the right where before it was going to the left. Now, just summarize your numbers. We go to the secondary circuit at 150. We add the 50 to it. we got 200 GPM lead. So you see how the good, good Lord's T-Law works if you just take your time. Keep it simple and just work your way through each T. It's not that difficult. But notice, the change in the primary flow rate had no impact on the flow rate in the secondary circuit because we have no pressure drop between the two T's. No pressure drop in the common pipe. Now what happens with the secondary flow rate is independent of primary flow rate. We just said that, so let's go to the other extreme. We still have 150 GPM in our secondary flow. We haven't changed it. But look at your primary flow. We reduced it from 200 down to 50 GPM. Can we do that? Sure we can. But what happens now? What happens now? Well, we got 50 GPM in the primary, 150 in the secondary, so we didn't change the flow rate in the secondary by doing this. But what happened in the common pipe? Ah, we got 100 GPM of reverse flow now, going back the other way. So now you've been through all the examples of the good Lord's T law. What goes in a T has to come out. And if you keep that pressure drop and common pipe down to zero or nothing, it has no impact on the flow rate of the secondary totally. What changes is the direction and the amount of flow in the common. The direction and the amount of flow in that common pipe. We're going to use this basic little building block to explain things to you because you cannot do a modern hydronic chill water or hot water system or even plumbing for that matter without understanding this basic concept of primary and secondary. So here's a summary of what you just went through. You see your primary and secondary loops. You see your little common pipe of green. We're assuming no pressure drop in there. So if what is the flow direction in the common pipe? If the primary flow rate is higher than the secondary flow rate, then the flow is going to be left to right as the air shows. If the primary flow rate is less than the secondary flow rate, then you're going to have what I call reverse flow in the common pipe, or the flow as your air shows from right to left. If the primary flow rate was exactly equal to the secondary flow rate, you'd have zero flow. Uh, that happens very seldom, but it's quite possible if the two are same. So now you know all the theory on primary and secondary, and you know all the flow rates and how to connect them. Go back. Don't let these big systems scare you. Go back and look at each individual T, make you some notes, and build it out. It's real, real simple to follow. Thank you very much for your time.